I believe the justification of art is the internal combustion it ignites in the hearts of men. The purpose of art is not the release of a momentary ejection of adrenaline, but is rather the gradual lifelong construction of a state of wonder and serenity. Glenn Gould, 1962 Glenn Gould and the Enlightenment, A Case Study for Performers by Chris Carloni, Office of Student Research Fellowship At the young age of 30, the artist Glenn Gould wrote this piece of wisdom in an essay titled Let's Ban Applause. I interpret his statement to mean art corresponds to our human nature, and whether that human nature is subjective to each one of us or universally shared, art communicates some truth to experience. Glenn Gould was an artist who strived to communicate truth through art. He was one of the most recognized and revered pianists of the 20th century. Gould remains known for the high level of contemplation with which he approached all of his work and the ever new understanding that followed. By focusing on distinct projects and ways of creating, he expanded his reach beyond the limits of someone known solely as a pianist, a music scholar, or public intellectual. Similar to Bach, Gould's posthumous reach into our musical lives grows even greater than in the period of his active work. Historical surveys, musical and otherwise, describe the Enlightenment as an intellectual movement that came to completion in the 18th century. These definitions conceptualize it as a non-continuous entity. However, many Enlightenment philosophers and those who followed thought of their efforts as more active, more lived, more performed. A process. Immanuel Kant, for instance, writes in his essay, What is Enlightenment? That the movement's main motto, dare to understand or dare to know, this daring effort to know the Enlightenment and how it achieves, is achieved, continues. The search for applicable frameworks is needed in order to reform confusion about such a vast process. As a musician, my work grows from projects lived and performed experiences. As an artist, my efforts are ordered toward the task of understanding. The OSR Fellowship has supported my efforts on this interdisciplinary project, Glenn Gould and the Enlightenment, a case study for performers. Musical Life The scope of this project is focused on current performers, music scholars, music teachers, and interdisciplinary researchers. Interdisciplinary thinking is necessary if contemporary artists are to use their craft to share ideas and examine the implications of those ideas, which we frequently say is the case, but can be obscured by our musical training. An interdisciplinary approach challenges the boundaries that performers, academics, and other thinkers impose on their fields. Further, the data sets can contribute to other research on specific Enlightenment or Gould topics. In 2018, I transferred to Chicago College of Performing Arts and began to finish my undergraduate degree as a Bachelor of Musical Arts. After three years of undergraduate Prior to transferring, I still had many uncertainties about musical life. These uncertainties stemmed from the lack of knowledge of the possibilities within music. It was a significant challenge for me to commit to being a musician with such a gap in understanding what that means and what the work entails. I knew how to play the bass and my abilities had gotten me this far, but it seemed that there was a great deal beyond myself so I began to search for answers. So what didn't I find? Answers. What did appear in research were more and more questions. The questions always had responses, many of which I respond to and utilize as the purpose for this project. The purpose is as follows. To present a model of the implementation of philosophical or intellectual thought into musical training and performance. 
to cultivate a deeper understanding of the moral and aesthetic, an area that too often lags behind a techni technical development in music. There is a need for interdisciplinary thinking if contemporary artists are to use their craft to share ideas. Further, this project is a culmination of my undergraduate studies, which nurtures my desire for learning and grows a deeper sense of connection. The data set has served as the foundation for my thesis, which responds to the potentials of the contemporary performer. From these fundamental elements, I moved outward to focus on the enlightenment and the life and work of Glenn Gould. The questions that followed, what makes Gould an ideological figure? Does Gould provide consistent and or coherent views and descriptions of his processes? How does Gould directly and indirectly relate to enlightenment ideals? Was Gould an exception or an outlier that can be reproduced? Then I moved on and had specific objective questions for the Enlightenment. What is Enlightenment? What is the difference between it as a process and a period? What are the ideals of the Enlightenment? Finally, why Enlightenment philosophy, not existentialism, specifically in the case that I relate Enlightenment to Glenn Gould. What I needed to do is achieve the ideals of the Enlightenment to construct a framework that really sought to look at the Enlightenment through time as a process. The Enlightenment period was critical era and many scholarly texts and discussions have been produced. A survey of important Enlightenment writers, thinkers, both past and present, accounts for the body of information and the specific perspective of my research. Stephen Pinker's recent book, Enlightenment Now, the case study, the case for reason, science, humanism, and progress is the cornerstone for the theoretical framework. Pinker provides detailed descriptions of the ideals as they were constructed in the historical period, but as well as through time. The important factor is that he makes the case for the achievement of these ideals in modern society using a combination of argument and empirical research. I use the four ideals, reason, science, humanism, and progress, to cover the duration of time from the 18th century through the 20th century to the context of the contemporary artist in the 21st century, in my thesis. The hypothesis that is central to my research process states the ideals of the Enlightenment have persisted from 18th century onward and are critical to contemporary understanding of modern life. The artist Glenn Gould integrates Enlightenment ideals both directly and indirectly into his work. Methodology. A broad survey of primary source material from Gould formed into two categories the direct speech and indirect speech. The direct material is taken to be his compiled writings and various interviews or TV documentaries. The indirect material is taken to be performances and the performance decisions such as the repertoire, his interpretations, aesthetic interests such as structure, or his understanding of technology. Then, several authors such as Kevin Bazana and Jeffrey Prizant have provided critical scholarly texts for research on Glenn Gould, which have certain focal points to his work. 
I use these sources to compare and analyze the research that they conducted and what I was finding in the primary source material. I also tested the validity of secondary sources through criticism based on what I read on Glenn Gould. The Enlightenment section, I utilized Steven Pinker's Enlightenment Now as the foundation for the Enlightenment framework. I surveyed the Enlightenment authors past and present, as was I was able in the time frame I was given, and my mentors provided feedback on the credibility of sources and their significance. What followed was two very large data sets, which formed two categorizations, one on Gould and one on the Enlightenment. Gould's life and work was categorized as the following. Glenn Gould's musical mind, his artistic process with technology, moral concerns and the role of the artist, and finally, transformation of musical life. The content of each section featured both direct and indirect primary source material from Gould and the comparison of the secondary literature. The categorization of the Enlightenment is the framework posited by Steven Pinker in Enlightenment Now. Reason, which is rational thinking through the evaluation of arguments in tandem with one's intuition and experience. Science, the body of knowledge and corresponding processes which consist of human and natural world studies. Humanism, the aim and moral commitment to human flourishing. And progress, which is not only possible, but it is happening. The survey of the Enlightenment text confirmed these ideals and provided general knowledge content as well as specific examples. For my thesis project, I made the claim that the categorization of Gould's life and work can be conceptualized within the Enlightenment framework because of their relationship. The data sets can be extended for further research. For example, investigating whether other musical artists have a similar relationship to the Enlightenment ideals. Such a question could provide information on how the Enlightenment is projected through time by the arts. The data on Gould has active potential to do further musical and sound analysis of recordings, as well as include empirical testing on his written work through sentiment mining and language testing to verify and peer into the relationships of his ideas and their coherence. This is a slide of many of the authors that are featured in my research. The illustration is the framework that I created for my thesis project and it fits in, it shows how the Enlightenment framework can hold within Gould's own four categorizations and what the content of those categorizations are as they relate to enlightenment. Discussion. The enlightenment is both a period and a process, and the methods involved reemerge throughout our developing history. There is not a definite conclusion to the Enlightenment narrative because the narrative is of such epic proportions. The Enlightenment framework that allows for the interpretation of past and present conditions. Further, the framework can reveal figures along the way that have contributed to the continual construction of the Enlightenment process, such as Glenn Gould. The framework applied to Glenn Gould's life and work, which is the basis for my thesis, has contributed a measure of Gould's actions and their significance to modern performers. 
utilizing both the framework and the interpretation of Gould, may yield the enlightening of ourselves. However, more work needs to be done to confirm this. To my contemporaries, there are answers in progress. An artist's work depends on how they respond and relate to the world and people around them. The desire to think and speak through our artistic acts comes from a focus on why and how, not so much what one person is thinking and doing. I finish with two important quotes. Never cease to be aware that all aspects of your, the learning you have acquired and will acquire are possible because of the relationship to negation. Negation allows a frame within which to define those things which we regard as positive acts. Glenn Gould, 1964. Finally, the Enlightenment motto dare to understand.